So this is your valuation model, right? You're saying $2,000 uh, share per share if you get a, a PE of 60 and all these kind of metrics, 3 million cars, back of the napkin. And so do you guys agree? If you take an important thing to remember here, if Tesla get a 50% market share, you just need 1.5 million of these. Okay, that's but even 1.5 million. That's only for the whole company. It doesn't include their energy storage business or robot right. or anything else. It's tiny. Okay, but see, 1.5 million, right? So I know that, Jeff, you said just a bit earlier, so I'm going to push back a little bit, you said it's all about scale. But some people are going, well, you don't need to scale robo-taxi right away. You just need 100,000 robo-taxis in the city of Chicago, right? That was what James Dama calculated, how many Ubers was needed there. And you can cover Chicago, 100,000. All those cities you just mentioned, Alexander, you don't need 100,000 per city. So you don't... No, but the United States is big. The United States is big. No, it's I, bigger. But, but, uh, mm. You're going to go city by city. You don't sure. need that many. So by 2027, are you guys still thinking there's going to be 3 million uh, worldwide, robo taxis. I don't know. Do I'm, I'm really that? not sure. I have to think through the three million number. But the 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 one thing I'm certain, and it's actually funny because I got a lot of of objections when I when I spoke about that. I think this will shrink the whole car market. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think that somebody that currently has two or three cars at home will only need one because people mm -hmm. usually want to have you know their own car for when they travel or whatever. Um, but everything else, errands, every you know moment where. Two people want to use a car for different things will be covered by will be covered by by robot taxis. And so for me, the car market shrinks. It's really funny because I hear a lot of people saying, no, 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 the car market is actually expanding because there will be robot taxis and everything else on top of it. I, I can't see that. Yeah, I don't see that either. There is a, a tiny counter argument, and that is the cheaper the vehicle, the more you open up the market. Again, per arc, so the BOID Seagull or whatever it's called at ten thousand dollars, that exposes a lot of people that wouldn't otherwise be in the car market. So there is that possibility, but again, nobody wants the cost of insurance as well, which could be a big problem in the future. Unless, of course, Tesla provide, providing the insurance, so this it could cut both ways initially. Okay, so walk me through it, guys. So in terms of since I have the big hitters here, <clears throat> what you guys think is going to happen to the stock price? August 8th, they come out and they say, we've got RoboTaxi. It's amazing. It works. I've got the whole program. We're going to launch three cities, Austin, Miami, and uh, Vegas. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to launch it next year. Santa Barbara. Nothing happens, at a... <laughs> Santa... nothing happens to the stock, right? I think all of us agree. August 8th, nothing's going to happen. And then they launch it the year later. When will you Why see Why a year later? Stock? Uh, okay, you tell me. Are you actually expecting on August 8th that they're going to launch it within a month or two? I expect it to be launched by the end of the year, yes. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Why not? Why not? In I mean, in in states where there's Tesla insurance, because that's the thing. I think if you want you, your own Tesla to be in there, it has to be a Tesla insured car. Um. That means they're moving from level two to level five. Then, yeah, I expect that to happen by, by the okay, end so, of this year. All right. I, it's not going to happen with you. My car is not going to become a robot taxi. The first robot taxi will be a robot taxi designed car owned by Tesla. They'll do it. They'll test it out. Mm, they might do it so earlier sure. than you said. They might do it earlier than you said, because like you said, Waymo and Cruz are already doing it. But... It's going to be city by city. They'll do it. Okay, I'll give you maybe one by the end of this year. I just, yeah. And that's what they'll do. They find the cities that have the best weather, the safest grid type roads like Phoenix or Scottsdale, Arizona, or maybe Vegas, somewhere like that. But it's funny because Alexandra, uh, Kathy Wood is on the exact same page as you and I have a slide on that. She believes robotaxis will be here before year end from Tesla. So. What? That, uh, yep. When is she? She said this, huh? She said that uh, Friday. What do you believe, James? I, well, again, they have the technology. It just needs to be tweaked. Turn off the nag and have it park itself. It's there. What the not vehicle there. looks like, we're not sure. Uh, I do know, I also heard, uh, I don't know if this is correct or not, but Giga Austin has a whole quarter of the factory dedicated to building yeah. the demo line. I think you guys know for the Model 2. I've heard that. Mm-hmm. And these things are going to be spun out every, what, 15 to 30 seconds. So, Jeff, you're the supply chain guru here. 
theoretically, they could be pumping out hundreds of these a day. And you've seen the production of Cybertrucks. Like I watched a video, drone video, and there was one of these things coming out of the factory every 45 seconds. I could not believe it. And I've walked the production line. So James, what do you imagine? Do you imagine this looks like a little bus where people sit in, you know, round or how, what, what do you imagine? I think we have a good idea what it looks like. Uh, it's right here in this slide. I think you've all no, seen it's it. it's not, that's not what it is, guys. Yeah. James, you believe everything you read? <laughs> but, but that was the, that was the wooden thing that there was a picture of Franz von yeah. Holzhausen in front of. Yes. Something like this. It'll be a two-seater. It'll be very small. It'll be very utilitarian, minimalistic. And it doesn't need a lot of bells and whistles. They can stamp these puppies out. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't have to be this aerodynamic anyway, because it'll be in concentrated areas. It won't have to go over 40 miles an hour. So that's, that's my vision. It'll be something boxy. I think it I should be aerodynamic because you want it to last as long as possible before you have to recharge it. I think you, you're really after yeah. efficiency. No. But if you're okay. driving around a city, the aerodynamics doesn't matter that much. It's only when you go exactly. 30 miles an hour. So. Because yeah. you, you think it's only going to be city robo taxis? Initially, that would be the low hanging fruit. I actually think it's going to be mainly airport. I don't know why I have this conviction that it's the main, the, the initial target will be airports, but I, I could be completely off. Yeah, I don't think the compact platform is going to be ready for production for probably a year or so after the unveil. Um, and I'm not trying to be a party pooper. They would have to, you know, I mean, unless they're just being totally silent on design locking what this is and if they've already done that. Um, and I think the other big long tent pole is the manufacturing CapEx design. They're not buying off the shelf robotics. They, uh, they are designing these robotics. They're sending them out. They have, um, you know, their own, you know, division of Tesla, um, that's, that's working on these robotics. They have to send it out for fabrication. And then think about it, the robotics themselves, the factory robotics have to be iterated on and prototyped. So they'll do a gen, you know, they'll do a gen one, a gen two, and then they'll get that into product. It's almost like a product itself. The robotics in the factory are a product itself. So those have to iterate a bit. And then when you launch a robo taxi, you really want to get this product to scale so it gets to the cost structure. You want to get to, to, to break even very quickly because uh, you don't want to be building fifty, seventy thousand dollar robo taxis when your target, you know, your target cogs are you know fifteen thousand dollars or or, or eighteen thousand dollars to. Um, so they really want to get this to scale uh, pretty quickly. So I think there's a couple of barriers to that, but. It, I, I don't know. It doesn't mean that they can't turn on some some limited form of robo taxi functionality with existing vehicles. But I, I understand why there's a debate on that. Like, will they do that, or will they start with a you know a purpose built a Tesla designed robo taxi to launch the network first? I I think we can we can debate that. Uh, but in terms of this compact platform, I. This platform definitely is going to be under development. Doesn't mean that there's not going to be something meaningful to unveil in terms of a prototype on 8.8, but in terms of a, a, a large volume of vehicles that are, you know, that are the actual purpose-built robo taxi, I think we're talking, you know, best case, the end of the following year. Yeah, I want to add something to that. I think actually we're going to go in three stages, and the one and the first and the second may be simultaneous. The first one is current Tesla owners using their Tesla, bringing them into the network. And again, I think conditions are Tesla insurance and a good safety score. I mean, if you think about it, everything has been prepared for years for this moment. Second group is Tesla's used car inventory. What am I talking about? Remember the Model 3 and the Model Y for a long time, and still now, cannot purchase back the lease at the end of a lease, they have to bring the car back. At the moment, still, Tesla puts these cars back into the open market and sells them. But I think that will stop. And they will use that as an initial dedicated Tesla-owned fleet. So that is the second group. And like I said, that can be actually simultaneous. If they start building that up from May onwards, they suddenly have thousands and thousands of Tesla 
old, old three-year-old Model 3s and Model Ys that they can activate at that moment. It's just a software up where, uh, update and off they are. And then the third group is the purpose-built vehicle, Jeff, and you're completely right, that can still take a year or two, whatever time it takes. I want to maintain, and Hybrid, I know you want to talk about design, but I'm just going to rush into that again. I actually think that James's picture of Franz's car is the dream still. I think that's what they're working on. But I do believe what's inside of that car and outside will have a lot of components of the Cybertruck. Remember, I was talking about last Friday, I was talking about this three weeks ago. I'm just so convinced that the Cybertruck launch was the prototype of everything new. Steer by wire, brake by wire, um, stainless steel, 48 volts, so many things that will all be key to the purpose-built vehicle. And so to get that one right and to get that one right in the masses may take a year or two. I, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, putting that into questions, but the first two groups, Tesla's own inventory repurposed as, as robotaxis and Tesla owners used uh, cars that they want to use for robotaxi, I think that is possible by end of year. Well, I very much disagree. I just don't understand why you would start with Tesla owners the risk for the Tesla owners. You don't know the variations of usage. You know, my car is crystal clean. I don't know where Jeff has taken his car in Chicago. Who knows? <laughs> Obviously, he's good. He's good. But it's going to be an Robo Taxi unveil on August 8th. They're going to show you the car, the vehicle. It's not going to look anything like this vision that okay, we saw let's in bet. the book. Let's bet. We, we let's will bet. bet. Hold on. It, this is, this is it, 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 you know, I keep telling people, and I, keep, I I feel very strongly that Dave, Hans, Franz has been working on this for since 2019. And this design is something he's very proud of. And it's autonomy first. They had to think, just like the way they built the Cybertruck, it was built for, you know, ruggedness first, right? And, and design first. This is going to not look like a car. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be designed for, uh, for if it's autonomy first, right? Like you said, the interior, right? It's not going to be, it's going to be something that you can have more entertainment, more productivity, more relaxation, and the, you can have different configurations inside, but you don't need to have it to look like that. I, I just don't think that a, the, the, I don't believe that a, the compact car is just remove the steering wheel and brakes, and then you've got the robo taxi. So first of all, I don't, I, they're not going to use my car, not going to be my car first. It'll be last. We will be last. And then you're going to do the robo taxi first. And I, I've been saying that it doesn't make sense that they would create a, yet a new ver, a new production line for this, although it's not a production line anymore, it's the unbox. But now that you've got the Model 3, Model Y, then you've got the Cybertruck, now you're going to create yet a brand new one? No. So I agree with you that it's going to be taken a lot from the Cybertruck. I've been saying for a long time that I actually thought it would be stainless steel. People said, well, that's not cheap. That's expensive. Uh, but expensive you know, over how long? If you can use this car a million miles, then stainless steel is the best choice you can have because it may be pay. more expensive yeah. initially, but it doesn't need yeah. any of the other work that you need afterwards, especially and for taxi use. If you're doing robo taxi, I need to feel safe. I'm not going to get into something that's going to kill me. But if I feel like, oh my God, this thing is stainless steel, nothing can damage this thing. Uh, I'm going to feel much more likely so to go. You think it's not going to be a two seater? No, I so so you know you saw that thing where Elon said good good interesting note when somebody said that 85 90 percent of all drives are two seaters to one person by the way and then the other five ten percent is two people, but if you look at all Ubers, all Ubers are four seater. So I think it's going to be a four seater but configurable, and so no. you. No. No, let, let, please let's bet well, the whole, because this the one point, I will win. Please, please, please. The whole point of Unbox, by the way, is that you could make a two-seater. You could make a four-seater. The only reason I agree with you that it could be two-seater is because you want to reduce the cost. And this is going to be minimalistic. It's going to be, you know, it's got to be lower cost. So that's and somebody who wants a four-seater orders a robo taxi why that is in the neighborhood, right? An owner owned or a Tesla oh, yeah, owned yeah. why. Oh, so totally. it's not as yeah. No, I think they're gonna have a two-seater or thought. This We've seen job postings. Car. We've Go seen ahead, job yeah. postings. You you pointed this out. You had a job posting. You pointed out that it has autonomous vehicle platform. So it's not just going to be a two seater. It's not going to be a four seater. It's going to be a van. It's going to be multiple variations of this. But 
yeah, I'll pay you. There's no way that they're going to book it. You, I'll be the bookie. Yeah, Alexandra's going to know. put her car you. first. Jeff, and she's going to rent it out right. first and roll a taxi. No, guys, this is going to be the last thing they do is, oh, by the way, we promised you owners to be able to do this too. No, no, you're wrong. Tesla is, and, and Elon in person, they're so proud of their Tesla owners, the ones that bought FSD and the ones that are subscribing to FSD. And actually, so they didn't give they didn't give FSD to the Model X and Model Y like uh, like James until just now. It's been like he's been waiting because, decades. It's because the problem is, as you probably know, is that there were different scripts, right? I mean, Neuronet is going to make this finally harmonious, but at the moment it was like you had to update each version of of whatever. I'm I'm still waiting for mine, but. No, believe me, the okay. Tesla owners who want to run will be in the first lot. And what do you guys think? The Jeff Tesla's and James. inventory used cars.